Hi everyone, I'm Neil and this is the NMB Woodworks channel. In this video I am taking you along whilst I make a small hand plane for my father for Christmas. Most of my builds will start out with some kind of drawing or sketch, although to be honest quite often this happens on the computer these days. There is something nice though about getting back to some squared paper every now and then. Um, so to start with I'm just mar marking up a template that's going to give me the angles that I need for the plane. So why a hand plane? Well, I've been kind of getting into making tools, making items of purpose recently. Obviously, making bowls and things, which I've done for a long time, is fun and it's interesting and it's a good skill builder, but um, there's a limit to what somebody's going to do with a bowl. It's really nice to make a tool that somebody can then use to do their own making with. So I'm using a shop-bought iron for this plane. Um, I could have had a blade made by one of the blacksmith friends, or could have even attempted to make my own, but for the sake of this plane, what I want is a really good, reliable blade. So this is one that I've bought, and you can see here I'm using that to just measure out to make sure that I've got enough space. You'll also notice here all my mistakes, whereby I started off with the dust extraction not even connected up on the bandsaw, and if you notice right at the beginning, you'll have clocked the fact that I hadn't even locked the fence in place. So it was a good start. But as you can see, cutting through this, and once I get the dust extraction added in, then we can fly through it on a slightly faster speed. What I really should have done here is marked up the boards so that I knew which side piece went where and what the orientation was. You'll see later on that that becomes a problem. At this point I had the option of gluing on this template, but actually there's only three points that are really relevant to me. There's the first one that I mark with the pencil there, and then two more that I mark with the ice pick. The key thing for these is to get these angles right so that the blade is going to sit at the correct angle. And leaving the template off means I can use it for future ones. So three marks, a ruler and a pencil is all it actually took to transfer that over. For these cuts I could have used the angle guide on my bandsaw, but for cuts this short I feel comfortable enough cutting them freehand. It's one of those things, practice makes perfect with it, but these are by no means perfect, but they're perfect enough for what they're doing. So use the guides if you need to use the guides, don't use the guides if you feel comfortable not using the guides. It's all down to personal preference on this sort of thing. So having cut all the pieces, I wanted to do just a quick dry fit, make sure everything's still lined up the way I expected it to. Check that the orientation of everything made sense. So just popping the boards on there and you can see it's starting to take much more of a familiar shape. The next step to take was to glue it up and this is where I made a big mistake. So when I took this sideboard off, I don't know which way I flipped this board as I lifted it off. So I applied the glue thinking I knew how it needed to go on and how it would glue together, but actually you'll find that I get very confused very shortly as to what I'm doing. You can see I put a triangle of glue, but it's a different triangle of glue, and then I tried to spread the glue. Uh, yeah, it all got a bit, a bit creative and interesting. Annoyingly, what I was trying for here was to get enough glue in the joins but to avoid having too much squeeze out into the internal gap. Squeeze out from the ends doesn't matter at all because I'm going to sand this, but squeeze out into that middle triangle was always going to be difficult. Unfortunately, with the mistake I made here, um, that wasn't really possible. As you'll see here, I spent some time spinning the board around trying to work out which way around it needed to be, and ultimately ended up adding some more glue to make it work.
having completed the glue up, the next job was to get the clamps on it, and as every YouTuber under the sun says, there's no such thing as too many clamps. That being said, with this project, I had to be a wee bit careful because I need to clamp the blocks in the middle in place. But what I need to make sure was that firstly they didn't slide out of place as I tighten the clamps up. The glue actually acts as quite a good lubricant to move them around. But also that I was clamping where there was wood in the middle. It would have been easy to accidentally put a clamp on the gap and to split one or both of the outside boards. So you can see I ended up with a kind of U-shape of clamps. And after a while drying, I was able to take these off. It's amazing how long glue takes to dry in Scotland in December. So having a quick look, you can see there's some squeeze out around it, but overall it's quite a good block there. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of cleanup to do. This takes me on to arguably the MVP of this entire project. Now, I am not in any way sponsored by Triton, but if they would like to, give me a call. No, uh, but this sander was amazing for this project. The ability to get that really flat surface was great having the registration surface that the block was sat on at 90 degrees to it meant I was able to get a really smooth flat base to this sand it to the point where the gap for the blade to go through opened up but keeping it really flat the whole way through so a sander like this whether it's the Triton one or another one is really really invaluable as I say not in any way sponsored by them but I'm not sure I could have done this project to this standard without this tool or something similar. In case it's something that's of interest to you, I do have some links down in the description below this for some of the tools that I use. I don't recommend all the tools I use, some of them really need replacing, but some of them are quite good and I would recommend. Those are affiliate links, so if you click them, I earn a little bit back, which helps fund the projects that I do on the channel, but it doesn't cost you any extra. So if you do want to have a look, go have a look down in the description below. So after an awful lot of sanding, which I'm not going to bore you by making you watch through, um, I had the block squared off nicely. What I did at this point was use some blue masking tape just so that I could glue the template on. I didn't end up gluing it on in the end, uh, but I didn't want to stick it to the actual wood. So using this and some CA glue, or you might know it as super glue, um, meant that the template stuck to the masking tape but didn't stick to the actual wood itself. This lets me then cut the curve on the top of the plane at the bandsaw easily and accurately to my original plan. One of the challenges with this bandsaw cut that you may have seen is as the blade passed from the area that had block all the way through to the gap in the middle it actually jumped slightly. Unfortunately I could sand that out later on but I hadn't anticipated it was going to do that so if I had I would have slowed up just as I got to that join. Making these trim cuts from the end uh, was actually quite a satisfying moment in this because the plane was starting to take the shape that I had planned out for it. Obviously still a long way to go, but it's nice to start to see it coming together into the shape you were expecting it to be. It was then obviously back to copious quantities of sanding, uh, using the sander there to just round off those curves, smooth out my mistakes on the bandsaw, make sure that all those cuts were really clean and nice. I was able to use the rollers at the end of the sanding belt here to sand the concave curve on the top of the plane. This gave me the ability to smooth out those problems I had earlier on and to make sure that that was a curve that I was reasonably happy with. Position for the hole for the pin needed to be quite accurate here. Obviously the pin is there to hold in the wedge and the blade. It needs to be close enough to the blade that the wedge can do its job, but not so close that you can't get the wedge in. So carefully worked out exactly where I wanted this and drilled through as carefully as I possibly could. With the hole drilled, it was on to doing the more aesthetic and less functional aspects of this. 
So using a variety of rasps, foils and my Dremel, I started to shape the edges of the plane. I wanted it to sit well in the hand, to feel comfy and obviously to look quite nice as well. After using the rasps, the files and the Dremel, I then moved on to a whole load of hand sanding and hand sanded the entire thing up to a total of 600 grit. I am, however, going to spare you all of the watching of the sanding because it took a fair while. For the wedge, I decided to use some maple and as you can see, forgot to record myself actually cutting it. So you can see the bit of wood splitting into two, but unfortunately, no pretty pictures of me doing the cut. Having completed all the individual component parts, it was then time to put it together as a quick test fit before I started applying the finish. The finish I'm applying here is my own mix of mineral oil and beeswax. Uh, it's based on a recipe from the Rag and Bone Brown YouTube channel, uh, which I'll link up at the top here. As you can see, it just really brings out the grain and that's really, really beautifully. And with the finish applied, the only thing left is to take some final shots of it in my nice white box and then package it up and deliver it to my dad for Christmas. Hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If you have, please hit the like button below. Please hit the subscribe. I'm very nearly at a thousand people subscribed to the channel, which would be really cool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.